Hi, Pentax Tips here. Today we're going to cover an overview training of the Pentax K3 Mark III. We will be covering a lot of its features, but not everything. Please see the timestamps in the description below if you'd like to jump ahead to specific topics. Despite this camera being designed for more advanced users, I'm going to provide this overview in simple terms so that it's accessible to everyone from beginner to pro. The Pentax K3 Mark III is a 26 megapixel in-body image stabilized DSLR. It was released in April of 2021 as Pentax's flagship APS-C camera. The camera features a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second. The max ISO is 1,600,000. The K3 Mark III contains internal Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Here's a link on how to get the wireless operation set up. It also sports an impressive 12 frames per second in continuous shooting. With the K3 Mark III being the premium flagship APS-C camera, not surprisingly, this camera features Pentax's reputable weather sealing around any point where water and dust could potentially get in. The first thing you will notice on the front of the camera is the Pentax logo, featured prominently on the front of the Pentaprism housing. The Pentaprism overhang is actually recessed and doesn't hang over as much compared to other Pentax models. The K3 Mark III model logo is just to the side of the Pentaprism on the left side of the camera. Just beside this is the metal connector for your camera strap, matching with one on the opposite side of the camera. To the right of the Pentax logo, and just above the grip, is a small LED autofocus assist light. This camera utilizes Pentax's long-lived and long-loved K-mount. The lens is removed by pushing the lens release button on the right side of the mount and rotating counterclockwise. To reattach the lens, match the red dots on the lens and the body and rotate clockwise until you hear a click. One of the benefits for photographers using the K-mount is just how long of a production rung the mount has had. Since they haven't changed their bayonet mount and kept the same register distance since inception, all vintage manual lenses can still be used on modern Pentax cameras. Here is a link to our video describing how to get vintage lenses working with the K3 Mark III. Moving to the right side of the camera, you will see the hand grip. It is made with a textured material that is very soft, but still allows for maximum grippage. Even for an APS-C, the grip is actually big enough to support your pinky finger, making this camera grip very comfortable and very functional. You might also notice that there is a light embedded into the grip. This is the indicator light for the self-timer. At the bottom right of the camera, you will see the letters SR. This is the abbreviation for shake reduction, Pentax's in-camera image stabilization system, the left side of the camera. We're going to provide an overview of all the physical buttons. We will be describing many of them in further depth later on. Remember to check the description for timestamps linking you to specific topics. Starting at the bottom left, we have a switch to select between auto and manual focus. Next, the autofocus mode button, used for accessing our different autofocus modes. A dedicated raw function button, which is preset to cycle between RAW and JPEG formats, and a dedicated shake reduction button. We also have an old school flash port accessible under this screw and cover. Under this rubber cover, we have our HDMI and USB ports. These ports will allow you to connect your camera to a TV or computer for either image viewing or image transfer. This camera also features internal battery charging via USB port, a very handy feature. We also have a dedicated microphone and headphone jack for video recording the right side of the camera. On the right side of the body is the memory card compartment. Slide open to release. The K3 Mark III has two SDXC card slots. The primary card slot uses the newer UHS-2 format, while the backup card slot uses UHS-1. Beneath the SD compartment is another rubber cover, which houses a remote shutter release port. The hand grip continues onto the back of the camera. The thumb grip has been expertly refined. It's substantial, but not intrusive, and it provides adequate support for single hand shooting. In the thumb grip, there's a light that will flash to indicate your SD card status when it's saving something to the card. The bottom edge of the camera has been beveled as well. The ergonomics on the K3 Mark III are impressive. Pentax actually brought in multiple people to specifically test the grip with a huge trial and error process to refine and perfect the grip. And this definitely translates when you're holding the camera. It's so comfortable that you just won't wanna put it down. On the bottom of the camera, there is another compartment with a little turnbuckle latch to access the battery. This camera uses the DLI90 battery, which is awesome because it's the same battery used in the other flagship APS-C cameras and the K1 full frame series. Under the bottom rubber cover, 
you'll find the electrical ports that attach to the camera's optional battery grip. And of course, your standard tripod screw mount. For reference, the camera's unique identifier serial number can also be found on the bottom of the camera. The top side of the camera. First, we have our main dial. It has an optional push pin lock so that you don't change your settings on the main dial accidentally. The lock button is located under the dial. It will pop up a pin that will need to be pushed in order to turn the dial when the lock is activated. More on the main dial later. We have our standard Pentax Flash hot shoe located at the back of the Pentaprism housing. Also on top of the housing are two small microphone inputs, as well as a speaker for video review. This little mark, a circle with a long line through it, indicates the camera's sensor location for determining register distance during very precise macro photography. If you wear glasses, you can dial in your prescription strength with the camera's diopter located at the top right of your viewfinder. This will allow you to use the camera's viewfinder without needing to wear your glasses. Even if you don't wear glasses, still ensure your diopter is set to a zero correction. We have a top view LCD panel, which displays our current shooting settings. Near the front is a three-way mode dial to swap between viewfinder, live view, or movie mode. We have an SFN button that stands for smart function. Customizable settings can be assigned to the smart function button for quick access to select features. Just above that, you have an exposure compensation button and an ISO button, which we will talk about in greater detail later on. We have our on-off switch that is located as a toggle around the shutter button, and toggling one further will activate a depth of field preview. Last is our control wheels. We have the standard front control wheel, and we have a top control wheel, positioned conveniently next to your thumb for quick and easy access. There is also a third control wheel, and this takes us to the back of the camera. Having three control wheels on this camera really gives you full control right at your fingertips. The K3 Mark III has a fixed screen that is also a touch screen. There is a proximity sensor under the viewfinder that will turn off the touch screen when you raise your camera to your eye. We also feature, for the first time on a Pentax camera, a joystick, which can be used to select your focus points in addition to assisting with menu navigation. Our D-pad features settings for white balance, outdoor viewing settings, JPEG custom image, and drive modes and self-timer. Our green button is also located on the back, next to the rear-facing self-timer light. We have our info button at the bottom, which displays a customizable control panel for easy access to user settings. This is very nice as it limits menu diving. Also at the bottom is our menu button, which opens up all possible settings for the camera. We have a dedicated AEL button, which stands for Auto Exposure Lock. This will take the exposure settings at the time you press the lock and keep those settings regardless of where you point your camera. We have a dedicated back button autofocus button. We'll describe how to get this set up in more detail later. Here is our image review button. Pressing this will display a preview of the images saved on the SD card. In the top left corner is a metering mode button shared with the trash can icon. And lastly, a lock button, which freezes your settings from accidentally being changed. To cover the top LCD display, along the top we have our shutter speed on the left and our aperture on the right. Directly below that shows our ISO. Near the bottom left shows our drive mode, that is, whether we are in single or continuous shots, and the classic battery life indicator. Next over is our smart function we currently have set. And last, we have our SD card icon displaying what cards are available and which ones are being saved to. The back LCD displays our current mode at the top left, the top right shows our shake reduction status, and battery life indicator. Then we have our exposure triangle settings, our shutter speed, our aperture, and our ISO. There is a display for your current smart function setting. We have a plus or minus five stop exposure compensation rule. Then we have six boxes which represent the physical buttons on the camera body. Those buttons are preset, as we mentioned earlier, but if you've made any customization to these buttons, those changes will appear for that location here. We have the current time and date, an electronic level for both vertical and horizontal levels, and right above that, we have the current setting displayed for each button of our D-pad. Moving over, we have our focusing mode, whether we are in AFS or AFC. This operates in tandem with the physical button on the left side for accessing autofocus modes. Conveniently right beside that is our AF hold status. Below this displays a layout of all the physical autofocus sensor locations and which ones are currently selected for focus operation. 
And last, we have our SD cards currently loaded, which file format is going to be saved to each card, and how many shots remain in the storage of each card. First, check to make sure your mode dial, located here, is on the camera viewfinder icon. To focus, press the shutter button halfway down. You will hear the focus confirmation, and a full press down takes your picture. The camera is equipped with a leaf shutter. There is no tactile bump as the shutter is released. It's a smooth action shutter and feels very premium and slick while taking pictures. The picture will briefly appear on the rear screen. This is called instant review. But if you want it again, the review button is this blue play button. To navigate around the picture, use the D-pad or joystick. To zoom in and check your focus, use this rear control dial. Again, using the D-pad or joystick to check around your image. Zooming out will place you in a folder system that archives your images. Delete an image or folder with this shared button, the blue trash can icon located at the top left. Live View provides a real-time preview of your image on the rear LCD. To activate Live View on the K3 Mark III, make sure your mode dial switch on top of the camera is set to the LV or Live View option. Just something to be aware of while you access the different shooting modes. Live View uses a different autofocus method than that of through the viewfinder. While using the viewfinder, light is bounced off a mirror in the camera to a dedicated phase detect autofocus system. While using Live View, the mirrors are held out of the way, allowing light to directly hit the sensor. Since Live View bypasses dedicated phase detection, it instead uses a contrast detect system which is generally slower to achieve focus confirmation than while using the viewfinder. So although the K3 Mark III and the new PLM lenses may have substantially improved live view operations, if you are shooting action, anything fast moving, I'll still definitely recommend using that viewfinder phase detect focus system. In live view, again, to take a picture, press the shutter button halfway down to focus, you will hear the focus confirmation, and a full press down takes your picture. The instant review will appear on the LCD. Instant review. The amount of time the instant review is displayed for on the LCD can be customized under Menu, Custom Icon Number 4, and down to Instant Review. We can select a display time from 1, 3, 5, or 10 seconds, Hold, which will display the image until you tap a button, or Completely Off. If you are confident in your shooting, selecting Off can save battery power as your camera does not need to render the image for preview. You will also see other instant review options in this menu. We will turn all of these on and explain their functions. First, we'll take a sample picture. Zoom Review will auto-zoom upon viewing your images so that you can already be checking your focus during review. Save Raw Data. This will save your image in RAW format. You'll also find the option to delete the image during instant review. Manage Image will let you delete, protect, or transfer the image while in instant review. Turning on the Histogram option will overlay a histogram at the bottom left of the screen the histogram is a very useful feature that will indicate the brightness of your image along the horizontal x-axis. Left is pitch black, right is perfectly white, and the amount of that brightness level is represented on the vertical y-axis. This can help a photographer know that their image is being exposed properly in the middle and not have a bunch of clipped data that would indicate an overexposed or underexposed image. The last option is highlight alert. I'll zoom into this part of the image to display some obvious highlight alert also known as blinkies. Upon instant review, parts of the image will flash red on your preview, indicating that the data is clipped and that part of your image is being overexposed. Image review. To access viewing options and image data for regular image reviewing, hit the review button and then the info button. Here, we can cycle through presenting standard information, image metadata, or no information displayed. Now that setting will stick and the next time you access your image review, the information overlay preference will remain the same. Further review options are under Menu, Review Icon, Page 1. Here we can select which SD card is accessed for playback. We can specify if the image is auto-rotated, if we're shooting between landscape and portrait, whether our images are reviewed in file number order or date time order, and here is our playback volume when reviewing videos. We can also select to delete all images here. However, it's strongly recommended to format your card instead of deleting from the card. To format your memory card, or erase all the data, go to the wrench icon number one. This will allow you to wipe all data on your SD card and prepare it for all new photos to be captured. Under menu, custom icon page four is zoom review, a speedy little function that zooms you into your image automatically by a specific factor. This saves you from having to crank your wheel every time if you know you already want to zoom right in and check your focus. 
There are a ton of other options you can access for in-camera image editing, including digital filters, image cropping, in-camera raw development, image resizing, level adjustments, white balance adjustments, and more ray corrections. All great stuff if you prefer to edit your images all in-camera before sharing or printing. Auto exposure metering. Photography is all about light. Metering is how a camera measures light, and we can choose different methods the camera uses to meter light. Metering modes are again accessed through the menu, camera icon number two, and the top option is the auto exposure metering. Selecting this option will allow you to choose between the full multi-segment scene being measured and metered, the center weighted option, which, which excludes the periphery from the meter measuring, and then solely spot weighted option, which only uses a point in the center to measure the light and meter your scene. There is also a highlight weighted metering system, which will meter off the brightest part of your image, allowing you to expose to the right of the histogram as much as possible without compromising too much detail in the highlights. This is a very cool and handy feature. However, unless you are trying to accomplish something very specific, I recommend keeping your metering settings on the full multi-segment being metered. ISO settings. ISO is the sensor gain, or in other words, the sensitivity of the sensor to light. A higher ISO means the sensor will produce brighter images as it is more sensitive to light. A lower ISO will produce a darker image because it's not as sensitive to light. The top ISO button can access the ISO settings, which then allows you to cycle through your available ISO with the rear control dial. You can jump back to auto ISO with the push of the green button. To configure your auto ISO settings, go to menu, camera icon page two, down to ISO sensitivity settings. Here, you can specify your upper and lower selectable limits of your auto ISO. You can also set preferences for the minimum selectable shutter speed while using auto ISO. Next, we will cover the settings for the viewfinder, live view, and movie modes. Taking a look through the viewfinder, starting from the bottom left, we see our drive mode, whether we're in single or continuous shooting, then shutter speed, aperture, ISO, our focus confirmation, which will appear in flash in the middle, our shake reduction icon, which will light up when activated, and last, we have our current smart function selection. At the top and the right side of the viewfinder, you will see electronic levels for both horizontal and vertical axes. As you change other settings, they might also appear in the viewfinder, such as your current smart function, if you're switching between manual and autofocus, or accessing exposure compensation. To change the functions during viewfinder shooting, go to the menu, camera icon page number one. We see AF with viewfinder. The two focus modes are AFS and AFC, which stands for single or continuous focus. In single focus, the camera will focus, lock focus, and remain focused at that distance. Continuous autofocus will constantly measure focus distance, and change the focus to track a subject as they potentially come closer or further away from the photographer. The AF active area option allows you to select between auto zone, zone select, select, expanded area, small, medium, or large, select single, and spot. Please see the description for a video on active areas. AF area restriction will limit the area that the autofocus can select to just the center of the available focus points. For these next three settings, I think the defaults are just fine, and I would recommend sticking with them. The AFS setting allows us to dictate the priority of the shutter release, whether the shutter will only be released when there is focus confirmation, or release priority, which will fire the trigger regardless of focus status. Similarly, first frame action in AFC allows us to dictate whether we prefer focus or release priority. Our action in continuous focus allows us to dictate whether we prefer a priority for achieving perfect focus or a preference to have high frames per shooting during continuous focus. However, the hold AF status setting should be much more actively selected. The hold AF status determines how long the AFC will remain at the focus distance before measuring and adjusting the focus again. The slower the subject, the longer the hold. If you are shooting an AFC, it will be very beneficial to actively adjust the hold speed to that of your subject accordingly. Action when AF fails tells the camera if we prefer the lens to keep hunting for focus and drive the focus back and forth trying to find focus, or to stop focusing and wait for a new press of the button. This is really useful for lenses that have a long focus throw or that may like to hunt a lot. Next options are for the autofocus point tracking in continuous autofocus. There are two types available. Type 1 uses both the autofocus points along with an advanced auto exposure system to assist with tracking the subject. If you prefer to only use the autofocus module without accessing the exposure system assistance, select type two. Next, 
Subject recognition can be selected on or off. This lets the autofocus system use subject recognition information, but only in auto area or zone select focus modes. However, the system is extremely impressive and can track a subject's eyes, a very impressive feature for any DSLR. A little bit more about subject recognition. Head over to Menu, Camera Icon, Page 2 to turn on Face Priority AE. This uses an advanced dual system of the regular focus points, but uses information for a high-resolution auto exposure system to help identify subjects. The system can be set to detect faces and use auto exposure for the subject's face. Extremely handy, especially with outdoor portraiture. Similar, but without subject recognition, the exposure of the image can be set to measure just from the selected focus points. Last up is our catch in focus. We have a whole video dedicated to this feature linked here. To change the information that you can view through the viewfinder, head to the menu, custom icon, page number four, and go to the viewfinder display. Here you can choose from various overlays that will appear in your viewfinder. We can specify whether we want both level and tilt or just level for the electronic horizon. We can turn on or off the viewfinder light that illuminates when focus is achieved. Or we can turn off all displays in the viewfinder altogether. The default information displayed for live view. At the top left, we have the main dial mode we are currently in, our drive modes, our white balance, currently set to auto white balance, and then we have the little thumbnail of our preset custom JPEG image correction. Over on the right, we have our shake reduction logo and our battery status indicator. Located at the top is our electronic horizon that displays the level of the camera and indicates when the camera is perfectly level, both vertically and horizontally. And at the bottom is the exposure compensation rule. We have our shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and the type of file format and number of shots left on our SD card. To change the functions in live view, go to the menu, camera icon, page number one. We see AF with live view. Similar to the viewfinder options, we can select our active autofocus areas. We have auto area, zone select, tracking, select large, medium, and small, and spot. Focus peaking is an awesome live view feature that outlines the edges in your scene that are in focus. The K3 Mark III has two types of focus peaking to choose from, either to highlight the edges or to extract the edges. This helps with manual focus as it'll be much easier to see when the edges of your focus subject become very sharp and outlined. A tip here, if you're in live view, pressing OK will zoom into your image and the rear control wheel can be further used to zoom in. This is a really great feature for manual focus photography and potentially coupling that with focus peaking, we can really nail the focus. Contrast autofocus options allow us to dictate whether we prefer a focus priority basis or a release priority. We can also select auto face detection to be either on all the time, only on in auto area or off entirely. If you are in a selected focus point mode, moving the joystick will allow you to quickly and easily select your focus point or by touch focusing on the rear LCD. To dive deeper into the live view customization settings, go to menu, custom icon page four, and go to monitor display, then down to live view. Here you can specify which shooting info is displayed and it allows you to customize the available information, such as adding in a histogram, a grid guide overlay, or highlight alert. We also see whether or not we want the electronic level to display. There are various level designs to choose from. Last, Flicker reduction hertz can be changed if you're having a problem with any flickering appearing on the LCD. Changing your video settings. When in movie mode, very similar to live view, we have our shooting mode at the top left. And next door, we have our microphone recording level, our white balance, our JPEG custom settings, our recording resolution and frame rate, followed by our shake reduction and battery life indicator. Along the sides, we have our stereo left and right microphone levels. Really handy because they will show you if any audio peaking is occurring. Top middle is our electronic level for both vertical and horizontal axes. The very bottom displays our current aperture. The bottom right shows the recording time remaining for the SD card currently being used. Along the right, we have some touchable options to turn on or off the live view display or to select our AFS or AFC, depending on the lens you have attached. We can select the option to touch focus, or we can access our exposure compensation. Further menu options for movie modes are accessed using the menu button, but remember to have the top dial set to movie mode 
in order to access the moving settings. Again, these settings are very similar to how we've already described in the previous sections. However, movie icon number five, down to recorded pixels, can swap between 4K and 1080p. And heading down to frame rate, we can select 60 frames per second when in 1080p or 30 to 24 frames when in 4K. As a side note, this is the first Pentax camera to offer 4K recording resolution. We can also access the recording sound levels, wind noise reduction, headphone volume, all pretty standard stuff. For shooting formats, every shot, no matter what, is taken in a raw format. That is the complete sensor output. But when sharing your images online, generally you'll need to share with JPEG format. The camera has built-in editing software to edit and produce a JPEG image, ready and easy to share. But it only saves a small subset of the data collected from the raw sensor output. So if you intend to do any editing of your images in post-production software, you'll greatly benefit by saving the raw data and accessing all the original data. To change the file format type, hit your menu button, camera icon number five, image capture settings, and select file formats. The K3 Mark III provides you with different file types to choose from when saving your images to your SD card. Mainly, the differences are JPEG format, or RAW format, or a combination of the two. Here you can choose between JPEG and RAW formats, or if you choose to shoot JPEG, you can specify the size and quality of the images saved. You can also select the memory card options, and you can specify whether you want to save both card slots or just one, as well as the card slot sequencing. Going down to the bottom, you can see the RAW file format, and you can choose between the Pentax PEF or DNG. The PEF type is Pentax proprietary RAW format, and DNG stands for digital negative. This format is just as flexible as PEF, but may have greater compatibility across editing programs. So just to be clear, if you shoot RAW format, you'll load your images into your RAW editor, make your edits in post-production, and then export your final worked up RAW file into a JPEG for your regular printing or sharing. Now, if you prefer to save JPEGs on the rig and only once in a while want to shoot a RAW file, this is the time to use the quick access button available on the side of the camera. Hold the button down to swap between save formats. For image settings, go to Menu, Camera Icon, Page 6, and the top option shows Custom Image. Here, you can cycle through the available JPEG preset custom images such as Auto, Bright, Natural, Portrait, Landscape, Vibrant, Radiant, Muted, Flat, Bleach, Reverse, Mono, and Cross Processing. Hitting the Info button will allow you to adjust the parameters for each preset and allow you to customize them to your preferences. Hitting the shutter toggle switch to the depth of field preview will actually take a test image for you to see the differences of your presets and adjustments. You can save any custom changes by hitting the AEL button. Further down the menu icon page six, this menu also shows many different in-camera edit effects that can be added to your JPEG images, including digital filter effects, clarity, and skin tone adjustments. Below that, we have the in-camera lens corrections. This setting allows the camera to pre-edit out the common lens distortions for lenses that transmit information with electronic contacts. Then we have some options for some dynamic range recovery from the shadows and highlights and some in-camera noise reduction. If you don't intend to shoot in RAW and edit your images in post-production and plan to let the camera do all the work for you, I strongly suggest going through and setting your custom image preferences. Another image setting available in camera is the HDR settings, that's high dynamic range. This can be accessed in the menu, camera icon, page four, down to HDR capture. Here we have an impressive display of options to explore using auto HDR, three types of preset HDR, or advanced HDR. In addition, we can specify the bracket value, up to three stops, and auto align features. We'll now cover the main dial. Click here to see our video on the exposure triangle to learn more about what these settings can do. On the main dial, auto mode allows the camera to decide all your settings for you. No matter if you try to select something, it won't let you override the automatic values. When the main dial is set to AV, that's aperture priority value, the rear control wheel is used to manually cycle through the available apertures for the lens you currently have attached. All other settings will be automatically decided for you to accommodate your manually selected aperture value. Similarly, we have TV, that's time value, also known as shutter speed priority. TV will cycle through the camera's available shutter speeds with the front control wheel, while all other settings will be decided for you to accommodate your manually selected shutter time value. 
Again, we have SV, that sensitivity value, which allows you to control the ISO with the rear control wheel and all other settings will be accommodated accordingly. TAV is a combination of AV and TV, allowing the camera to automatically select the ISO. For manual mode, the shutter is controlled with the front dial, the aperture with the rear dial, and ISO is selected using the top ISO button. A nice feature that will appear when you're in manual mode is that a plus or minus five stop exposure rule will appear along the bottom. The middle indicates a properly exposed image, negative stops on the left indicate the image will be underexposed, and positive stops on the right will indicate overexposure. P mode stands for program mode, this is very similar to auto mode, but this time, if you do change a setting manually, the camera will allow you to take control and accommodate your changes. This is also known as hyper mode. Hitting the green button will bring you back to the program line or default settings. Bulb mode will keep the shutter open for however long you have it pressed down. This is used for long exposures that require lots of light, longer than the camera's preset longest speed of 30 seconds. X mode stands for sync, which automatically sets your camera to the max flash speed sync of 1 two hundredths of a second. The camera also has five user settings preset on the dial. This will allow a user to configure their preferred preset settings in any fashion and save them to those locations on the main dial. You can find those settings under the menu custom icon page one, save user modes. In any mode, the exposure compensation can be changed with the exposure compensation button. The exposure compensation will offset the automatically measured exposure to either darken or brighten the image by a user-defined number of stops. For example, if you find your automatic settings are producing overexposed images, you can dial in some negative exposure compensation to get the images to where you want them. The green button can be viewed as a reset button. It takes any settings you might have entered and defaults them back to the auto recommended settings. As an example, resetting exposure compensation back to zero instantly, or when in manual mode and you wanna jump back to the recommended settings to acquire a good exposure in an instant. In addition to being a customizable button, the green button is also used for achieving automatic exposure while using manual lenses. See our video in the description for more information. The third control wheel is a real treat on the K3 Mark III. This wheel can control your third variable in the exposure triangle or for any other setting you'd like it to manipulate. For those settings, go to the menu, custom icon number two, and head to e-dial programming. Here you can specify what the dial does in each of the main dial settings. Next, let's cover the D-pad. First, the left button accesses our white balance. Our eyes and brain automatically compensate for the effects different light sources have on the color of a subject, but our cameras need to be told how to adjust to make colors look normal under different light sources. Auto white balance usually gets it right, but under certain circumstances, informing the camera what light it's shooting in may yield better color results. So we have multi-area auto white balance, daylight, shade, cloudy, a couple different fluorescent types, tungsten, CTE, three manually stored white balance settings, and also three manually stored color temperature settings. You can hit the info button to customize any of these parameters. The down button accesses our outdoor view settings to either dim or brighten the LCD, depending on the outdoor lighting conditions. For the right button, we have our custom image settings. We've covered these settings already under the image settings section a little bit earlier. The top button displays our drive modes and self timer. Remember, you can hit info on any of these modes to adjust the parameters. We can select single shots, continuous shots, high speed, medium, or low speed. Bracketing settings, where a press of the shutter will take three or more pictures at different shutter speeds. This is to produce an image that is slightly underexposed, an image that is properly exposed, and an image that is slightly overexposed. These images can then be combined to produce a high dynamic range image in post-production. While your front dial adjusts the number of shots to take in the bracket, the rear dial will specify the stop distance between the shots. Depth of field bracketing is similar to regular bracketing, but instead of bracketing with auto settings, the images are bracketed to acquire various aperture stops. Similarly, we have shutter speed bracketing, AKA motion bracketing. We have M up, mirror lock up, which holds the mirror up out of the way, reducing camera shake during image acquisition. We have multiple exposures, which creates a single composite of many images over a period of time. Hitting info lets us choose between composition modes of average, additive, or bright. Under the Save Interim Images option, we can specify if we want to blend the images in camera. We can also specify a single or continuous shot and the burst rate of those shots. There's interval shooting, which takes many pictures over time to create a video time lapse. And last, there is interval composite, which is a combination of taking multiple exposures for blending, in addition to interval shooting to make a time lapse video. For any of these drive modes, we can also select the timer or remote control options. 
There's a self timer for 12 seconds when the photographer wants to run around and be a part of the image, a two second timer to eliminate any camera shape when pressing the shutter, and we also have a remote and remote timer options. When shooting a self timer, the light in the front grip and back panel lights up and sounds are emitted indicating the countdown has begun. in-body stabilization. One of the best features available standard on the current Pentax DSLRs is the in-body image stabilization. This means the sensor is mechanically floated and through the combined use of gyroscopes, the sensor is able to counteract a fair amount of shake from our hands. Many other brands DSLRs do not have in-body stabilization and you need to buy special lenses that are equipped with their in-lens stabilization. Having the sensor stabilized means that every and all lenses mounted on the Pentax camera are capable of being stabilized, even vintage manual lenses. To access the shake reduction options, hit Menu, Camera Icon, Page 7, and you can see the options to have shake reduction turned on or to assist with pano shots. As with all image stabilization, there is a minute image quality compromise when the stabilization is activated, so if you prefer, you can turn that off. Just below these options, you can specify whether you prefer the shake reduction to turn off automatically when entering self-timer options. It's a nice touch because it's presumed that the camera is being mounted on a tripod and no handheld shaking should be occurring. Another benefit of having an in-body image stabilized camera is that the sensor movement can be used to combat the effects of moiré. Moiré is a very distracting distortion that can appear on your images that display a pattern. Many other DSLRs have an AA filter, that's an anti-aliasing filter, covering their sensor to help remove this moiré effect. However, that filter can somewhat compromise image quality and there are cameras out there that simply have no filter. But the Pentax in-body stabilized sensor can be used to simulate the filter and remove these artifacts. This is accessed in the menu, camera icon page four, down to AA filter simulator. There are a couple types of simulation you can experiment with, including bracketing, to remove the moiré you're experiencing. Be it with a physical knock or with a silent ultrasonic burst, the in-body stabilization can be used to remove sensor dust. Yes, despite the excellent weather ceilings included on the Pentax DSLRs, any interchangeable lens system is susceptible to sensor dust. This automated dust removal cleaning technique can be found in menu, wrench icon number six, dust removal. You can set it to operate for both or either starting up or shutting off the camera. If there happens to be a very stubborn piece of dust that needs a bit more force to remove, you can select the sensor cleaning option. Make sure you have enough battery charged in order to facilitate the operation. The mirror will be held out of the way, exposing the sensor and allowing you to use a rocket style air blower to remove those dust particles. Remember never to use compressed air, only a rocket blower, or when absolutely necessary, a dedicated cleaning kit. Horizon correction. Again, leveraging the in-body stabilization, you can select Horizon Correction, Menu, Camera Icon, Page 7, which will balance the sensor horizontally and help correct the visual horizon and make sure that it's as level as possible. It's always distracting having a non-leveled horizon, and this feature can help get the best possible shot in camera. Just below that, another benefit of in-body stabilized cameras is the ability to effectively make any lens into a shift lens with in-camera composition adjustment. This is highly useful with architecture photography. When the camera is placed in live view, options will appear to either move the sensor up or down or rotate to achieve the desired composition. Pixel shift, yet another benefit of the in-body stabilization and a very powerful feature of Pentax cameras. Pixel shift is used to make hyper-resolution images. Pixel shift options can be found in menu, camera icon number four. First, make sure your camera is mounted on a tripod and you're taking a shot of a scene without too much motion in it. Take a picture and four shots are actually taken. The original shot, then the sensor moves exactly one pixel up, one pixel over, and one pixel down. These shots can then be combined in post-production to acquire extreme resolution and highly color corrected images. Astro Tracer, another astounding feature available through having an in-body image stabilized sensor is the ability to take long exposure Milky Way and other astrophotography images. Check the description for an Astro Tracer example. You can purchase a Pentax GPS unit that will geotag your images as you take them but on compatible Pentax DSLRs, they can communicate with the movable floating sensor. The GPS will pick up your geolocation and will provide information to rotate the sensor relative to the star's movement above you. Rotating the sensor in coordination with the stars allows you to soak up as much light as possible while creating pinpoint stars. 
that is, without star trails. Astro Tracer settings are found in the menu, camera icon, page 4, and down to Astro Tracer. Here, you'll be able to turn the feature on and perform calibrations. And another tip for when you're out there shooting nighttime shots, under menu, wrench icon, page 2, we have our outdoor view settings, which will darken or brighten the LCD, and we have night vision LCD display options, which will redshift all colors. This is easier on our eyes and lets them stay more adjusted to seeing in the dark. Just further down the menu, you may also want to turn off the GPS indicator lamps if that light is affecting your astro long exposure shots. It'll be interesting to see what's in store with the new hardware and firmware advancements Pentax may have for Astro Tracer. This camera is extremely customizable. We have a whole video dedicated to customization tips for the K3 Mark III. Please see the video linked here for five tips on customizing the user modes on the main dial, the E dial, and how it operates in coordination with the main dial, our info button, which brings up a control panel for easy setting access, FX buttons, which allow you to customize the settings of many physical buttons on the camera, and all the smart functions, which can be toggled when pressing the button on top of the camera. For a quick tip, I want to quickly show you how to change a smart function. Maybe it's just my preference, but I strongly suggest actively selecting the AF hold status while using AFC. Now when you hit the smart function button, you can jump over quick to the feature and adjust your status accordingly. Some additional tips for the K3 Mark III. Back button focusing. I love using back button focusing. This setting is accessed under the menu, custom icon page two, down to AFAE lock settings. Go to still image and then the shutter AF button. Going down to the second option, it decouples the focusing from the shutter button. Now the only button that will focus is the back button. Disabling the beep. Some photographers prefer to solely use visual focus confirmation lights rather than a sound indication of confirmation. If you'd like to turn sound effects off, let's go to the menu, wrench icon number three. Turn down the volume, or you can just unselect in focus to stop the camera from chirping with every confirmation. Another cool feature is electronic shutter. A recent firmware update added the ability to shoot with an electronic shutter. They'd added this feature under the menu, camera icon, page four, Shutter mode selection. Electronic shutter will allow you to access up to 1 16,000th of a second shutter speeds. See the link in the description on how to upgrade your K3 Mark III firmware. There are tons of other preferences and settings that can be modified to meet your needs with the Pentax K3 Mark III. The last thing I'd like to cover. Did you make all these changes and you can't remember what you did or how to change them back? You can reset everything. This is in menu, wrench icon, page eight down to reset. Here, you can choose which settings will be reset, and you can put all the camera settings back to default. Boom, back to standard settings. Thank you for joining us for this overview training of the K3 Mark III. If you like this content and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. Thanks.